Yo, what's good? Welcome to Counter Currents. This is your host, Petey Steele. Elena Torres is AWOL at this moment. Uh, she will be back. No need to worry. But we got my main man all the way from NYC, James Madden. Say what's up. I got steamy glasses, too. Hello, Honey, man. I'm glad I have steamy glasses. I never know how to say hello on these goddamn things. I'm sure. <laughs> Do you get that a lot? No one knows how aggressive to be when they say hello on these um, everyone feels awkward. I like you open with what's good, right? Is it just yeah. spectacular? Good. That's wonderful. I'm into the brevity thing. Elena, she'll go roll all your credits down and then go, yeah. And then, you know, then you'll feel like you have to say something out of gratitude. Because how many people actually like intro you with all your fucking credits? And you got a few. Yeah, none of them really mean anything. <laughs> so it's the weird thing when you get to the bottom, like, I guess that's impressive, but probably not. But thank you. And I appreciate it. And I don't want to sound like I'm not happy that you said them, but I'm also kind of embarrassed that you just said them all. So this works out. Yeah. So what do they mean to you, though? That's a good question. Credits? I mean, yeah. It's a great question, baby, right from the jump. So, here's the, you know, it's an interesting thing. You earn something, so you should be proud of it. But also you should move the fuck on to the next thing. So it's, it's like weird as a host when I host a lot. Um, people who want really care about you hitting their credits it's kind of annoying because it seems like a lot of times people want you to say shit to get them over but when you get right. to a level it's most people be like oh whatever you, you could say this and i'll be like what are you what are you promoting to me they're way, way to promote like i want people to promote the special coming out so i'm like hey can you say that cool man great but uh it, it's cool it's nice we also take a step back and be like oh my god i accomplished this and that's really cool and years ago i would have punched my own mother, if she was still alive, in the mouth for anything remotely uh, resembling a credit. And I have one, so it's nice. But then you have to remind yourself, well, you know, just to keep going on. It doesn't end. The it journey, does not the progression end. keeps going. You're absolutely right. And, and it's so weird to think, like, I've been doing this 10 years now, and you get a couple things, and you think it's going to change your life. And then the next day, it's just back to riding the train. It's like the end of the graduate, you know? You're just sitting on the fucking bus with a bunch of limp dicks. You You're know? just listening to the same four Simon and Garfunkel songs for the rest of your life. Yeah. That's it. Plastics. You really like Mrs. Robinson the first time and Sounds of Silence, and now you realize the best it's going to get is that nonstop. Yeah. So I make it a point to tell myself, all right, you know, chill out for like a day once you get a good thing, kind of. And then the next day you can go back to work. You got to smell the roses. I do believe that. It's nice to have blowout days. Like, I don't know what I'm doing yet. The day this thing comes out and I'm having like a thing in New York before like a premiere. Um, I don't know if I'm going to treat myself and just get really drunk and then eat Chinese food the next day and just seep it in. I don't know, but it's nice. It is nice to have victories. It's I almost didn't go to like brunch after we did like the beacon when I opened for Chrissy and, and opened for his taping. So like, man, I'll just rest and get ready for my show tonight. It's like, hey, stupid. You just did something cool. And someone yeah. invited you to do something cool, wants you to do another cool thing. You want to go to the Soho house and see really hot people serving you French toast sticks. Why don't you fucking grow up? And I yeah. do. And Chris hot was one of French our favorite sticks, guests. Is, is what it is. What's that? Chris was one of our favorite guests to have oh, he's here. The Him best. and uh, Sergio. The great time. Oh, come on. He's the best. The two yeah. of the best, Sergio. So much fun. And they, they ran into my friend boxing. They went boxing during the fucking daytime at the local gym. Get out of here. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is wrong? Like, they're like Goggins when they're not fucking um, doing comedy. Sergio's nonstop. He's always yeah. been boxing. I mean, sometimes I don't think he will go on the road because it doesn't make sense because he'd rather just train people. He's that yeah. good and that great at it. He trades yeah. like a million comedians how to fight. So now, now you used to be able, if someone ran their mouth, to be like, shut up, pussy. And now you're like, well, shut up, pussy, unless, what'd you do uh, Monday through Thursday during the day? Were you with Sergio? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. In that case, keep talking, pussy. <laughs> so speaking of which, I mean, when are we going to see that Team Chichone action on stage? I mean, it's been like one month post-slap, and uh, I'm not seeing that yet. <sighs> I don't even want to put it on either. You know what's really crazy? I went to L.A. the day after both times that those attacks happened in L.A. Is that the craziest timing? Like I was in Vegas uh, 
watching like a John Wayne movie with my uncle, who's like my surrogate dad now. And we're about to go to LA the next day. And Chris texts me. It's like, turn on the Oscars. And then I'm like, oh my God, this is horrible. And then I ride into LA the next day. And then on the plane to LA for the festival, I find out about the Chappelle thing. I'm like, is this the dumbest law? Anytime I go to LA, someone's just going to get smacked in the goddamn mush. Mm -hmm. Someone better hide Wanda. <laughs> I'm just shocked at the security not being there. Like I always thought the bigger you got, the more you had people, but I guess it's never been a problem like that. Well, the story supposedly with the Chappelle thing is that Rihanna was there and she's pregnant and someone's acting a fool with Rihanna. And then everyone went to protect R Rihanna and, and the unborn um, child. And then that, that it still should be better. Well, I was at the store the next night and the level of security to see him at the belly room was you could probably break in to the Pentagon easier. It was absolutely insane. Wow. Like you could get into the U.S. Mint a lot easier than that shit. You could grab some fresh 50s straight off the press than it was. I mean, there were dudes who they all were dressed like men in black. It was wow. it was hilarious. It, it was is, like, so they, they, is this the solution? I'm asking the commissioner of comedy here. Is this the solution? Well, no, I mean, here's the solution. We need to stop putting fucking heckler videos on. We need to stop. Uh, empowering this shit. We That's need to circulate that picture nonstop of what happened to that dude and no one feels sorry for that dude. In wrestling, when you jump into the ring, I've seen Hulk Hogan throw actual, I've never seen him throw a real punch in my life. Halloween Havoc, 97, he fucked the dude up who jumped into the ring, just tore him up wow. through real haymakers. Football, they usually turn away when people get on the field and don't show it. That's a rule. That's an agreement by the uh, uh, network. Players, Sometimes yeah. you see it. And a guy just get, I mean, refs fuck a dude up. Punters are out there like, what, bitch? Punters. Yeah. Keith Richards, about a month or two, I believe, after um, John Lennon died in 80, 81, was on stage in, in the Superdome and in New Orleans. And a guy jumped on stage just dancing with Mick Jagger. And Keith wasn't having it because his friend just got murdered in front of his building. Keith takes his telecaster off and spins it like 10 times. The guy makes the mistake of running to him. And Keith smacks the shit out of him with a fucking fender telly that clips oh, on wow. youtube and That's guess what awesome. no re no remorse I, I i've almost beat the shit out of people with a goddamn mic stand wow stay out of our territory but yeah. that's how we have to do it we've been empowered people now where they think that this is part of the show and we can do whatever a guy attacking a guy who's paid to to do stand up and make fun of people like he always does at the Oscars, a guy went up and smacked him, got an award 30 minutes later, wasn't in jail, got an award and a standing O and made he got emotional about it and everyone ate it up. And I, I knew at that point, if he gets away with it, why won't Bobby the fucking plumber think they can get away with it? No yeah. offense, Bobby, your work is not um, horrible at all. Prince Bobby, King Richard, what the fuck? They're all the same, baby. No. I, I mean, was Will Smith acting way better when he won the award, then in that stupid movie. I, mean, <laughs> I didn't that's, see that stupid movie. Yeah, I don't know. I don't fucking whatever. It might have been okay, but it, it just kind of blew my mind to see a guy like that who's been so saccharine. And I don't think he's soft, but he's like a play the game kind of guy for 35 years. He would open for NWA, and then they'd clown him in interviews and be like, parents don't understand shit. Most people in the ghetto don't got no parents. Fuck this guy. But yeah. he can open. You know, and he would just take that kind of shit. And I wondered if that wasn't pent up over the years. The and this was Philly. a time for him to just like Hadouken, you know? What was that word? Hadouken? Yeah. I don't know that word. Fucking Street Fighter. Oh, Ryu, so a street fighter Fireball. Guy. Not much of a gamer. No, not nobody. Uh, RBI Baseball 4. You want to break that down? You want to talk about the 87 Twins? The, the Kirby Puckett batting third? Um, <laughs> It's crazy. Um. He's like a real Philly dude, and people don't know that. And Chris, I'm even though Chris was like inches smaller, I'm like, Chris could have went. I've seen Rock like get get fired up. Like he's a dude from Bed Stuy when that wasn't fashionable for white trust fund kids. Like, right? He's a he's a dude. And like when I, my favorite part is when he goes, "I can go." To me, that meant one of two things: it's either I can throw it, or also I could verbally destroy you guys really bad, more than mm -hmm. the GI Jane comment right now, dog. Yeah, but he handled it like a pro. He just said, fuck it. Good for Chris. Yeah, I do, too. I agree 100%.
Well, James, so when's the next time you're kicking some heckler ass? Never. If you fucking don't even step a foot, I don't even want people to joke about it. Done. Kiss my ass. Don't Good. even. James I mean, works just... the perimeter. See, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, even talking about it, I'm worried. I mean, I, mean, I just I, I just want just come and see the goddamn show. That's right. Amen. I saw last night a guy invited some Navy people on stage and they kind of did a wrestling thing. I'm like, this is going to go bad. And it ended up being wonderful. <laughs> but it's like this is a bad present. And also kept calling them fucking Marines. I'm like, you've never seen assault. Like they're in white suits. They're in God. They're, the, they're CBs for Christ. That's sake. like calling a Jew a Palestinian. You know? yeah, you, I'm, I'm like the short, the, the worst you could have done other than that is, is call them Coast Guard because everyone gets offended by that. <laughs> everyone get, You call the Coast Guard Coast Guard, they get offended. It's like, no, no, no. We're, we, we tell everyone we're Air Force. Yeah. People got to watch the last detail and relearn history. You know, there's and a lot enough shit. cinematic capital out there. Yeah, yeah. People should know. I mean, you might as well have called them the Kiss Army than fucking <laughs> calling them Marines and the Navy. Um. So, James, I see an uh, Oakland hat on now. Are you from the Bay originally? I'm so, um, sorry, sir. I'd like to correct you that this team on my head plays in Las Vegas, Nevada, sir. Oh, 702. How dare me? you? We stole them fair and square. So you're from, from LV originally. I'm from Vegas. I feel so bad. I met Punky Johnson last night and she's wearing an A's hat. And I'm like, are you from there? She's like, no, I'm from New Orleans. I'm like, good, because I feel like we're probably stealing that team too. So forgive me. Uh, you know, if we're from the Bay, that'd be really awkward. Wow. So how, what's it like to uh, steal a football team? It, it's great. It's great. And the baseball yeah. team, why stop there with sports? Their city yeah. hall, half of Silicon Valley. We're just going to take whatever. Whoever's up there still. Is Ricky Henderson still there? Just put him in Summerlin. Who? Uh, We'll just commandeer the whole city of Oakland. Hell yeah. Let's just take it back. I mean, they're the little brother, the little angry brother of San Francisco and now San Jose. Come with us, Oakland, just secede from Northern California and become part of the Vegas Valley. Time shows. Let's do it. Let's get that shit, B. Blow the whistle. So um, what did you come up in LV comedy at all? Mm -hmm. OK, five and years, how, baby. five years. And that's yeah. where you started. Yeah. Okay. And, and what made you go to NY after five? Just not enough opportunities? or I just love doing it. And I'd only get up like maybe two to four times a week and they'd all be within a couple of days. And I knew um, it's one of those things I knew to get better. I had to get up a lot more. And I knew for my own mental health, I had to get up every day. So I decided to go and I went to LA for a week and I went to New York for about a week and a half. And I decided to come back to New York. My boy, Shuli, and another mutual friend of ours was out there. And a couple of people already knew we're out there. L.A. I didn't hate, which I thought I was. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the stage time, it's just goddamn. I, I, I think about it as I visited L.A. a couple of times um, in the last couple of months. Of how much different I'd be as a performer. Mm -hmm. Could I potentially have more money in my pocket? Maybe. But would I be uh, decent at stand up? Maybe not. Who knows? So I'm like happy I did it. It's just yeah, fun. Yeah. I love New York. I had a New York accent in Vegas. I watched so oh, many wow. Scorsese movies. I have family from upstate and that one out of every five cousins had a Brooklyn accent just because they were sick of explaining they're from fucking Rochester and just wanted to be cooler. <laughs> and so I picked that shit up and it all made sense. I love public transportation and walking and all. Oh, my God. It's great. And what Big year was this building. when you made this move? Oh, six, baby. OK, I'm at 15 so years. At out 21 here. 21 years huh? total. Well, I started in 01. Yeah. And so I Every year as it passes, I'm, I'm obsessed with numbers. And so like 20 and 15 meant a lot. And it was a good year. And I'm like, does that mean the next year is not going to be good? I'm like, no, nah, dog. 21 and 16, baby. Black Jack and Joe Montana up in this bitch. What you know about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then next year is 10 years of not having a day job. So the hits keep coming. Oh, wow. So what's that like not working? Because I mean, I've been working the whole time I've been at this shit. And maybe it's why my ceiling is where it is, but maybe not. Maybe that's well, just some bullshit I tell myself. I don't well, know. it's over your head, which is good. Some people don't work and don't have no goddamn ceiling over their head. It's true. It's a weird thing where it can get in the way um, because, uh, like, I had part-time jobs. I was waiting tables, but only, like, a few days a week. But my main thing was stand-up still. And so because I knew that it, if it wasn't, I wasn't going to – keep going to the steps I needed to take. 
it, it, I've seen people wait too long. And I think that's better. I probably waited too long. I probably could have quit a year or two before, but my grandpa who was dead at the time, uh, mm-hmm. still dead. He hasn't come back guys. That's shocking. I could just see him going, Hey, stupid. Why? Uh, it's free money. You basically barely work. Take the money. I've seen people jump the gun way early and it stunts their growth. And I, most of those people now I see are barely doing it or are done. I've seen people with this logic. If I, I'm only getting up five times a month. If I quit my day job, I know it will get me more. I'm like, well, are you turning down offers because you have to work? No, you're so that you're not being, so you're basically getting offered five shows a month and you're getting, yeah. And you still hang out on that? Yeah. So what's the difference if you quit your day job? I just know that if I did, okay. And then they do it. And it's like three months later, you don't even see them hanging out anymore because they're fucking broke now and had to get a shittier job with shittier hours. And they, it just doesn't fix it. Make sure you're sustaining. Like I did the math and I'm like, I can do this. It's not going to be pretty, but I can do it. Mm. Hell yeah. So where are you in New York now? Like residents. I'm in the glorious Upper East Side, my friend. Can you see that wonderful tree? Yeah, I see, see a my vintage view? record up on the window. That's usually the mark of a brick. <laughs> <laughs> Which record? I guess something behind your shoulder there. Oh, that's Neil Young's record. trans album. Oh, nice. Everything everything up is like a sim- symbolizes something. Okay. And, oh, and next to it is a 45 of Johnny Cash, because I am pretentious. Don't even have a vinyl player. Suck my balls, everybody. Don't even have it. Don't need to listen to it. Just want to show it. That's all I care about. Yeah. It, it means something to me. I have about 100 rap tapes all sealed from the golden age. I don't even have a player. Tapes. Not even CDs. Tapes. I don't even play them. And I love the music. And I don't show them off. It's just knowing they're there. Oh, it's, it's That's a, it, lovely to me. It's a security blanket. Yeah. You know what's hilarious is that we've gone so far now that vinyl outsells everything that isn't digital and it's like mainstream and cool and it, but it, it's kind of lost. It's like edge and it's like, it used to be a bit of a secret and now you go to a Barnes and Noble, you go to, you go drop off your dry clean and they're like, Hey, do you want to get this Lana Del Rey vinyl tapes now kind of have that. I know tapes are making a comeback and there's all kinds of art coming out with, t- with tapes. And now there's a romantic tape sucked because they'd break and shit. But now there is something great about the smell when you'd open up the case and when you'd make, I, I still, I, I make a playlist a week. It's like a homework assignment and it's good for me. And I used to make CDs, dude, mixtapes were the, when you had to press on two different machines of the goddamn CD, the effort, and you might fucking break the tape while making All it. All into the radio. Yeah. Calling the radio, hood shit like that. Right, you write the thing on it. Can, can you imagine if, if Spotify allowed you to write the playlist with your goddamn fingers, your psychopath yeah. handwriting on the thing? <laughs> playlist about a girl I never met in Los Angeles. Whatever, dude, psychopath. Like, that is so much fun. I miss tapes. They are pretty damn great. I mean, that scent you brought up. I never figured out what that was. I mean, never really looked it up either, but it definitely got you high. And it's a weird smell. What the yeah. fuck was it? And it was different than CDs. Right. CDs had their own. Yeah. CDs was a little more subdued. <laughs> CDs was a little more. You were a man of more means. So they said, we can't give this guy the fucking crack. We got to like, you know, yeah. buy a Coke in or something. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Yeah. But tapes was just like, like a goddamn magic marker's anus. <laughs> we'll go try and find find a tape right now and do a, a live video. It's me smelling the shit again. Marks a lot, sharks a lot. Mm-hmm. Well, cool, man. So NYC and you're up mostly. I do see pictures of you at Caroline's, the cellar, clips, shit like that. Do you have any regular routine or is every week like an adventure? Every day an adventure? <sighs> every day is a winding road my friend is that cheryl crow i bet you don't have her tape next to the beat nuts and goddamn epmd i sure don't <laughs> i'm glad um, you know those tapes i have them both buddy of Business course you never do. personal intoxicated demons what come on playboy you, you know who you're fucking with um d- dude everything's different you just take what you can you get a little nervous on tuesday because that's when a lot of the spots come for the next week 
and you're like, you wake up, you get the bullshit out of your eyes. It's like, am I going to have a self-esteem today or not? Yeah. So, I mean, you just bounce around. I mean, we are in, in like independent contractors, so that's kind of what's fun about it. Yeah. Bouncing around. It's, there's but a lot Tuesday's of Tuesday's the day spots. And then that's kind of when you find out what your check's going to be right for the week. more or less. Yeah. You figure it out. I mean, a lot of stuff gets advanced, like road stuff gets advanced, you know, as you know, it's like, in, in, you know, months or so and, and all that shit. I'm one my of those dudes. If I don't get, what's that? My road shit is like me in the car that I paid for for work. And I just fucking drive to somewhere outside of the beltway yeah. Get down here in the DMV and, you know, get an envelope, 50 bucks, 100 bucks here, there. You know, it's not it, it's not like, you know, I get it. It's like, cool. This will definitely pay for some gas and some Taco Bell or whatever. But like, you know, I can imagine in your shoes, it's like, will I make rent? Yeah, I mean, you know, things are all right. So no, so it's just I just hustle. Here's the beauty, brother. If I don't get some, if there's days open, I just send texts. I just. Hey man, I'm around this day. I'm always chill about it. Always like, yo, something just opened up on Tuesday. And if I get work, I get work. Yeah. That's it. We just keep moving on, man. Yeah. I'm not here to panic anymore. It all yeah. works the fuck out. Fast yeah. forward to me next time. Yo, I'm fucking panicking. Can you pay me for this interview? <laughs> yeah, I got to start booking people in like times of desperation and I'll pay something a little more because I know it's hard, but I want to have more people sweat on this entertainment podcast. Yeah, you got to make them earn it. They're just not yeah. earning it enough, sir. No, they sure aren't. So you got an album coming soon, yes? I have a special that is part of it was record. So everyone's just recording everything at once now and putting it out at different times. So we recorded an album. We filmed it. We recorded it a year ago, basically today. Um, it was cool shit. We released the album in November, November 11th. Remember, remember, um, put it out, debuted at one. People told me shouldn't put it out. I had to leave record labels, had to go to another record label. It was the first comedy album they put out. Fuck yeah, what up, Pinch? Um, one album of the year, Nintero Bang. Cool, put out vinyl about a month and a half ago. And now we're putting out the special. Finally, it's maybe 10 minutes of the same material. It is the check spot. It is the worst part of the comedy show. I don't know if you got them there, but on the road, it's different than New York and New York that everyone pays their bills and it's a young comic or the host. And it just goes from a great show to a goddamn town hall meeting for health care that sounds like a knife fight breaking out. It's it can be absolute chaos. I did the whole set during that on the road. The headliner gets it about 30 minutes in their set and goes straight to flirting with the waitresses who are handing out the bills and doing crowd work. So if you notice a dip when the headliner is on, that's what it is. So I'm, I'm a lunatic. I did a whole album and now a special. We recorded four sets of the check spot while I was hosting one weekend in New York. And then we're putting out two of them with some interviews that are in black and white. It's different. You're never going to, you're never going to see anything like this. I know there's a lot of crowd work specials. I do a Q and a with the audience to interact I know everyone's doing crowd work after 20 years of being told to fucking not do crowd work and it's annoying, but I'm doing it. And I think this is better and different than most. And I hope everyone enjoys the shit out of it. Boy, I just bored myself selling this. No, just man. bored the shit out of myself. I ran out of breath after I just did an hour of cardio. I watched a bunch of clips that I mean, your crowd works excellent. Even at like the points where some of it seems to falter at some points. And I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way, but it's hard to make you know, with crowd work, people just rip for like 20 minutes or whatever. But you have good recovery things within there, too, where you kind of keep the ride going. But that's what it is. People don't get that. And mm -hmm. now with, with everyone putting out TikTok videos of 25 seconds of, hey, where are you from? D.C. And then a close up to your eyes or my eyes with our eyebrows going up. And that's the punchline. There is awkwardness to crowd work. And we're going to we show this. I get booed in this special. There are lulls. I'm telling people, if you're expecting this to be a special like everyone else's every 20 seconds or whatever. Don't even bother. It's different. It's a complicated one, not complicated, but you need to be patient in it. But crowd work works like that. I mean, I listened to Don Rickles. Hello, dummy a million times. It's not laugh a second. It's not yeah. supposed to be. You get in and out of holes, but the laughs are bigger because of the buildup. It's almost like a horror movie. It's the tension builds. 
where is this going? What's going on? Oh shit, laugh. And that's like the big scare. It That's the beauty. It's a pure journey and you have to trust your instincts and you have to be present. And that's the best. And I think this captures it. But yes, it never is full on blip, 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 blip. There's going to be blop, blop, chill, chill, right. blop, chill, fucking weird. What the hell? How's it getting now? This blop, blop. Okay. That sounds like the, the rantings of a madman. Hey, everybody. Um, hello, blop, um, blop, Morse code. Yeah. No, it's yeah. like, it, it, but I could say, because like the Bill Burr Philly rant's another example. You sure. Know? They're booing the shit out of him, and then he just turns it around. But then there's still going to be some booze. It wouldn't be Philly, even if you're killing and there weren't some fucking booze, you know? They boo when they wake up in the mirror and brush their teeth. Boo, yeah. toothpaste, bitch ass, boo. When the Blues Brothers got Bob's Country Bunker, they still had some fucking bottles getting tossed at the chicken wire. So what the fuck, right? That's right. Exactly. What the fuck? You sounded just like David Lee Roth at the end of that song. <laughs> I'll pay David you for Lee it. Roth. What the fuck? A Van Halen fame? Did he say what the fuck on something? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I believe at the end of Unchained. Oh. He goes, I'll pay for it. What the fuck? Talking to a prostitute, I believe. It's fun. God bless you, Diamond Dave. Yeah. That's another um, tape, but not in the collection, next to Fear of a Black Planet and um, Paid in Full. No, certainly not. Although I have no qualms with them. Uh, I just dislike Sammy Hager. That's about it. What don't you like about him? Let's have a real talk. I just think he's kind of a diva. He wow. exited and enter, tried to re-enter many times. And uh, David Lee Roth's the guy. It is so weird. I've put down that feud. It is of people of my age. Dudes love that fucking debate, and I'm done with it. When, when Van Halen, Eddie died, and I was uh, still in Brooklyn, I went for a run that night. I was playing in the park. Mm -hmm. You know, desperate times during the pandemic. I played Central Park to 20 people, found out he died, got emotional, which I did not think. And I just played Spotify's This Is Van Halen, and I came to grips with, you know, you can like both. These Sammy songs aren't horrible. But people yeah. still like to be, you like that? I'm like, I'm 44. Am I really getting, getting goddamn <laughs> fuck brawls over 5150 versus uh, women OU and children first? one two or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, I mean, am I really going to get in this debate? It, I didn't say I liked the, the guy from Extreme when he sit, was in there. All right. <laughs> Why don't you relax? I didn't know the guy from Extreme was in there. That's funny. Replace Sammy after they did the two songs for the greatest hits with Dave. And Sammy left, and then they didn't get back with Dave. And they brought in Gary Sharon and saw the wheels come off the goddamn skateboard, baby. Oh, my. So, the check spot. It's out. It's round. June 3rd. June 3rd, June 3rd. on the YouTubes. June 3rd. June 3rd on the YouTubes. Okay. And where can people, like, purchase it? Is there any way to, like... No purchase, baby. This is for you guys. We're going to do a premiere at some point that day. I'm guessing around noon. We still haven't figured that out. But June 3rd, it'll be available. I would wow. say some point in the afternoon, it's going to be there. I might even put it at midnight while we're screening it at New York Comedy Club, 4th Street, if you're in the New York area, June 2nd. I have a show I will be hosting. Yamanika Saunders from the DMV will Excellent. be there. The yeah. great Phil Hanley, not nice. from the DMV. Andy Fiore, yes. a Villanova boy. And um, Night Cream, Greg Stone and Greg Harami's wonderful music project that is the funniest, most unbelievable, uncontrollable, unhinged act in the world that you have to see with your own eyes and hear with your own ears to believe. And then at midnight-ish, we're going to screen the special, which is like 40 minutes, and I will drink and probably get emotional thinking of every dead relative who's not there. There it is. And then the third, it will be up there and out there, and I'm going to – it's going to be a slow ride getting views – we're going to let it sit there and be a piece of fucking art and be the, so I think what would be a hip hop equivalent? I always want to oh. be like the comedy Lou Reed who um, was in the velvet underground who didn't sell any records, but everyone who bought the record um, did something and he inspired a lot of people and he just did enough of a career to make a living and do well and put out good art. I'm trying to think what a hip hop equivalent would be. Would it maybe be cool Keith? Yeah, I would say him or maybe my favorite. Cool G rap. Cool G rap. Could be. Yeah. Maybe Dell. He never got the money he 
I feel deserve, but Cold I mean, Gino. I guess he gets just enough to get by and have a home in the Poconos and all that oh. sort of thing. Fucking yeah, what up, Poconos? Had some wild I'm a nights up there. Of that guy, so I can say yeah. he's definitely one of them. Um, I think more of them make their money ghostwriting than anything else. It seems like it, yeah. Mm-hmm. What about um Dell? I love Dell from Oakland. Yep. Yeah, hieroglyphics, yeah. Ice Cube's cousin. He, you know, he gets a lot of sales in Europe though, too. As really? an addition, yeah, and across the world, Gorillas did him a lot of favors and for a single. You know, Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of his stuff is considered kind of vintage now because he definitely developed a sort of like pothead, you know, niche of an audience, almost the way Cypress Hill did, just not quite as big. It's hilarious. I have um, there's a housewife, white lady who I would not think would be a fan of Dell. And she loves um, Mr. Dabalina, which is insane because it's not like a big hit. Right. But it, she's like, I love this song. This is this, this is real hip hop. I'm like, I didn't expect that from you, M- Maria. This is wild. And you're 13 kids. Well, you know, Tajay's mom lives in my neighborhood where I'm staying at now. It was the weirdest thing. Um, I'm walking through. This is, you know, Hyattsville, Maryland, staying at this lady's place. You know, I see this, you know, older looking lady wearing like a tank top with Golden State Warriors colors and, you know, the GS, the bridge logo, but then yeah. also a Hyro logo. And I'm going, she just smiles at me. I said, hieroglyphics? And she goes, Tajay. And I said, uh, you're his mom? And she goes, yeah. And I said, oh, uh, like, I idolized that guy. I said, him and Festo and AP. She's like, yeah, and uh, Opio and stuff. And I was like, holy cow, like, she's not bullshitting. And she said, he's an architect now. She said, He's done well and everything, and wow. it is true. I Googled all of it. It checks out, so we got a picture and everything. I love that you checked it out. It's like, I'll get to the bottom of this, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, well, she's a different – I don't want to put her maiden name out yeah, there. Yeah, don't blow her the fuck up. Yeah. We're just, we got the gag out. We got the yeah. gag. The people got it. Yeah, but it, I learned more about Tajay that way than I actually ever bothered looking into him as, like, just his family into people. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Better than Wikipedia. Fuck yeah. <laughs> well, James, this has been fantastic, man. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, my friend. What a what a pleasure. Please uh go to the James Mattern pattern with an M, the James Mattern Instagram. And June 3rd, don't fuck around, everybody. Oh. The check spot is here to be your velvet underground, to be your Dr. Octagon, whatever you want of comedy it is something different that was people said don't put it the fuck out we're putting it out if you want to see raw comedy do you want to see bend and almost break it is there for you so please check it out on the youtubes and the james Mattern on youtube uh please subscribe and get that video the minute it drops and watch the premiere cool fantastic thanks so much for coming on again and uh follow pd steel at counter currents dc also steelborn dc Arlington Draft House, you know the drill. Elena Blondita for Elena. And we'll be back sometime in the, you know, near future. There it is, B. All right, peace. Late, late.